Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor a new project every week. And this week we are doing Sunset Glow. There it is. There you go. Finally got it, sorry. We have Keenan working the cameras. He'll tell me where to look. He sometimes makes jokes or asks questions. Uh -huh. I paid him one time and then he told me how to like do my job and so never again. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm actually wearing a backpack for no reason. That's a rule. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are going to do this project in five steps. Our very first step, we are going to do a sketch. Our second step, we are going to do our sky gradient. Our third step, we are going to do our far farthest mountain. Our fourth step, we're going to do our mid-ground mountain. And our very last step will be our uh, mountain that is in the foreground that is closest to us. Okay, five okay. steps. Sweet. We are using four colors for this project. Um, our first color is Tahoe Blue. Tahoe Blue. Tahoe Blue. There were comments that it sounded like I said Taco Bell. Taco Bell. <laughs> or Taco Blue or something. Tahoe, like Lake Tahoe in Northern California. Our second color is fuchsia. Our third color is tangerine. And our last color is dandelion yellow. We are using two paint brushes around six and around two. This is the Let's Make Art um, classic series. So um, you can use those. We use around six and around two pretty much almost every project. So if you don't have those brushes, they might be nice. Um, if you have Princeton brushes, those will work great too. Whatever you can find. We're also using uh, Wasi tape in this um, project. So if you're a subscriber for the month of October, you've got a couple rolls of Wasi tape and we are using this to tape off our area. Um, so I did kind of like a pyramid shape. You guys can do whatever shape that you want. It's up to you. You have the freedom. I like that shape. It makes me think of a tent. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I will say that just be aware of where you're putting the shape on your paper. So as an example, I taped off my area first and then I realized that this is like super high on my paper. So if I were to take off the tape, the subject would be like oh. really high, which is fine. You can always trim your paper, but I wanted it to be more center. So I re-taped it and I just moved it down. So then that way, if I weren't to trim it, it would still be centered on my paper. That's so fun though too, because that means you can change the size of it. Yeah. You guys can do whatever you want. I just want to give you a little warning that that was a problem I ran into. And so I don't want you to also experience that. Okay. Let's do our oath. And then we'll get into painting. Um, some of the warm ups before we do our oath. We're gonna go over like values and gradients in this project. Um, if you're very brand new to watercolor and you're not sure what those are or what those mean, we have a super helpful beginner series that would be great for you guys to watch through so you know what I'm talking about. Um, but if you have been paying with us for a while, that's really the focus of this project today. Um, okay, now we can do our oath. If you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. That's good. Thank I you. love that bell. Michelle, thank you for that bell, thank always. Thank you so much. So great. And I love to start that way because this is just a friendly reminder. The joy is in the creating. That's the joy. The joy is not in making something perfect. That's not what we're after. I don't know if you know this. We're not about perfection here. Not at all. <laughs> I would have lost my job a long time ago if you got fired for making Everyone's mistakes. Everyone's like, wait a second, dude. Do, does Sarah know that what she just did? <laughs> I don't, did is she staying here? Uh, <laughs> well, and if you're lucky enough to have been here with us since the very beginning and received some of our first step-by-steps and written things, you're gonna notice a lot of typos. Now, thankfully we have someone that checks those for us now, but. Oh, but that, well, let's be clear. You were writing those step-by-steps, right? Yeah. Yes. I still write the step-by-steps, but now I have someone who corrects them Ch for me. because spelling. 
Grammar is not a strong suit of mine. <laughs> Spelling, not a strong suit. And that's okay. That's okay. I have different talents. Yeah. Like painting, okay? <sighs> Anyways, friend friendly reminder, we're not about perfection here. We're about fun and fun. joy and creating and playing and... Camaraderie. Enjoying life. Too. Community. Connection. Connection. Growth. Happiness. Happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Kindness. Let's name all of our values. <laughs> okay. Now we're actually going to start getting into it for the people who are like, just start already. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. The new people. What is happening? <laughs> that's how I know I when someone. This some... was a paint tutorial. <laughs> that's how I know when someone is new. First time watching, they're like, "You talk a lot." I was just like, "You're new here." Yes. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Yeah. Thank you for joining. Hopefully, you stick around long enough to maybe like it after a while. <laughs> maybe not though. Maybe I'm just like, you see this, you're like one and done. That's okay too. Everybody has different teaching styles. Okay. So this landscape is loosely based off of a area in Utah called Monument Valley. Well, okay, I googled it and it says Monument Valley National Monument, but I feel like there's monument in there twice and I don't know if that's right. Do they have someone checking their I information? Don't I don't know. So if you know what I'm talking about, that's what kind of this is based off of. So if this seems familiar to you, that's what it is. Um, so we're going to loosely sketch this. Now again, this is your painting, this is your creation, and since there's no outline, you guys are free to do whatever you want. Even with outlines, you guys can throw those outlines out the window and draw whatever you want. You know what I mean? You're the artists. But um, I'm going to draw this. So I'm going to have a pencil here. I taped off my area in whatever shape you want. And I'm going to start by drawing my um, far, farthest mountain. So kind of coming up like half an inch from the corner of the tape. I mean, coming across and then it doesn't have to be a perfect line, you know, mountain ranges or, you know, rocks and stuff are different shapes. And it's just going to come up a little bit and then come down. And then, so that's number one, okay? Number two, I'm going to come across here. And then this is going to come up kind of go straight across, stick out a little bit, go back down, kind of like a jagged edge, come up again, go across, okay? You'll notice that I'm not being very specific of like go up an inch, go down half an inch, slight angle, because this is very loose. It's off of, it's based off of a true place. So if you want to do it exactly, you can look at a reference photo and do it exactly, or you can just eyeball it or make up your own world, mm. which I'm always a huge fan of. And then for my last, my mountains that's closest to us, I'm gonna actually have it come out in between here, and it's gonna come up above this point. So you wanna make sure that this is taller, because we're trying to show that it's closer, so it's gonna be bigger, and then goes down, okay? And if you, if it's easier for you to erase lines where they've overlapped, you can. I mean, we paint over all of it, so it doesn't totally matter. And it's a pretty dark value that we paint over, so you wouldn't be able to see it, but just in case. Okay. Yep, that feels, that feels good. Now, as a little reminder to myself that you can put this in or you cannot put it in, is you'll notice that we have like a glow on these ranges, which is why I called this sunset glow. And so if you need to remind yourself, we have to paint those areas like yellow. So um, you can like mark off some of these places where you want that glow to be. So then when we go to paint them, you don't forget and paint the whole thing blue um, because watercolor is transparent. If you played it like blue and purple and then try and do yellow on top of it, you're not gonna see it. So you can just mark off the areas that you want to highlight. All right, now we're going to get to painting. Now, one other little note that I've noticed with the Wasi tape and the liquid watercolors. Um, tape is a great way to, 
to like clean off an edge to try and get a clean edge. I've noticed that with liquid watercolors, if I'm using a lot of paint near the edges, the paint will like go underneath the tape. Um, so just be aware that that can happen. Your, your paint can bleed and it tends, for me I've noticed it tends to bleed more when I'm using a lot of the paint um, and super saturated colors along the edges. Another trick that I do to try and make it so it stays like a clean edge is all like really pressed down on my tape mm. to make sure that it's like adhered to the paper nice really well. Seal. I also keep blue ple bleed proof, blue pe blue proof, proof. <laughs> bleed proof white on hand. That's a great way to clean up the edges. I also digitally scan a lot of my artwork and can clean things up that way. So. There are other options for you. Is everything okay? Yeah, we're good. Okay. So, let's get started. We're gonna do a gradient from like red to orange to yellow, okay? So, to make red, I'm going to mix some fuchsia with my tangerine. And now I have this really gorgeous red color. See that? That is, I want to say vibrant. It is. Okay, so I have my red ready to go. I'm going to take my paintbrush and using just water, I'm going to do the top half of the sky using water, okay? I love this technique. Then I'm going to take red and drop it in at the top. And if you got to do a couple layers so it's the value that you want, do that. And then I'm going to grab orange after I've gone about a couple inches, and I'm going to introduce orange. And I'm going to overlap the orange with the red. That is so pretty. Okay. And then add more water. And this is where you have to be careful. You kind of have to start avoiding your mountains now. So I'm just, and I want to work fairly quickly so then these gradients like stay smooth with each other. And now I'm going to grab yellow and introduce yellow to the party. Hi, I'm yellow and I like to party. <laughs> I love yellow. And then if you want to like move your, like stand up your paper and let these colors kind of like go back and forth on their own within the water that you laid down, you can. And then I'm just gonna drag this yellow down to the mountains. So we're going from red to orange to yellow to really light yellow. That's our transition of colors. Let the colors create their own color community. Yes, color community happening here now at Let's Make Art. <laughs> and then if you need to go back in and you're like, okay, I feel like I lost my orange there, you can go back in. And maybe even the very top, you're like, okay, that's red, but I want it to be like super. You can do just fuchsia. Mm. So it's like fuchsia, red, orange, yellow. So just kind of play with it, but just to give you a, war a heads up, the more that you like play with it and do layer and layer, the more likely it is that you're gonna get blooms because that's gonna introduce different drying times and different um, amounts of water across the thing. Again, I don't think blooms are the worst thing. I kind of love blooms. Um, so that doesn't scare me, but if you don't like it, just, just a word of caution. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I am noticing, do you see, is there a strong line in the middle of that? Yes, there is. I think what happened with that is um, I drew a line, a pencil line across to center my tape where I don't think I actually did that in this one, but I did that to make sure it was centered and then I erased it. So I have a feeling that that paint is settling in those spots that I erased. That makes sense. 
I thought it was maybe a creased paper. Do you know what could you could do though? Is do you remember when I did the nebula yes. with the triangle? You could totally turn that into like, I don't know. A nebula. A nebula. Absolutely. Even though it's a sunset and not like a sky. Whatever, it's the world you're making. Yeah. Okay. So that is step one. We did it. Boom. Good job. Okay, now we're going to do, no, that was step two, because step one was sketching. Boom, boom. <laughs> boom, boom. You're almost halfway done with this painting. You it didn't even know it. It doesn't rhyme, but <laughs> with boom, boom, but we got it. Nailed it. Okay. So now we're going to put in our farthest mountain. Now I chose like purple as the shadows for this mountain because I also wanted to play with the fact that like shadows and silhouettes can be cool colors and then highlights and lights can be warm colors and so like I wanted to give this feeling of like almost like a cold desert but then the warmth the sun brings right at sunset so everything is glowing even though the rock if you touched it would be cold cool do you know what I'm talking totally. about okay so that's what I was going for um, so I chose like purples for the, for the color of my, of my ranges here, my monuments. Your Mountain. monument, monument. My monument valley national monument. <laughs> <laughs> that can't be right, but I'm, I checked the, I checked it twice. It's gotta be right. Okay. So I'm going to take azure blue and some, um, nope, Tahoe blue. I'm taking Tahoe blue and fuchsia to mix purple. And you'll see here that my purple changes values where like the farthest one is a lighter purple and then that's more of a purple and this is like a black purple. And I do that because of atmospheric perspective, which is the idea that when things get farther away, the atmosphere itself is creating um, something like the air is making it. So the things, as things get farther, they get lighter in value and not as contrasty. So things, so values tend to even out and they get lighter. And that's because there's space, there's air, there's things, atmosphere between. In photography, they call it noise. Oh. Also, there's less detail farther away. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. That's right. Okay, so I have my purple. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to it to make sure that it's a lighter purple. And again, if you want more of a pink purple, add a little bit more fuchsia. If you want more of a blue purple, add a little bit of more Tahoe. So I'm just going to make sure my sky is dry. And then add purple. And if you want to overlap on this um, mountain, you can because we'll, we'll be adding values to each one so it would darken. So those would be covered up. You see what I'm saying? You see, I see on the top cam what you're saying, but the side cam, I, I don't really see it. Cause I'm painting onto my foreground mountains. Oh, gotcha. Like I'm okay with that because I'm gonna be doing almost black here. So those will be covered. Got it. Thank you for explaining that. Now I'm not gonna do it on my second mountains here though because this is a glow that I want to keep yellow. Mm. Okay. And then I'm going to darken it just a little bit, like right on the edge here before the glow, because when light is behind something, whatever's in front of it, right there at that edge, it would be darker because the light is coming from behind it. So that's why over here it's a little bit lighter and then right here it's a little bit darker. Okay. And I'm going to leave that for a second. I'm not going to put my glow in yet because I don't want the purple and the orange to like mix together and create a mess. I want to be very clear where this edge is hitting. So I'm going to move on to my second mountain, my mid-ground mountain here. creating a purple. Making sure it's nice and dark. It's not going to be the darkest one, but it's going to be second to darkest. 
and again just putting it in. Now if your sky is not dry when you put this in, it's going to bleed everywhere, so just be mindful of that. And again, kind of avoiding my glare spots. Now on this one, since it's not right where that sun is hitting, it's coming closer, I am going to lighten a little bit where it transfers to the light. So I'm just going to do a swatch where it's transferring like that. So this one, it's darker on the edge and gets lighter to this highlight right here. This one, it starts out lighter and then gets darker, okay? Now, the other thing that I'm going to do is this is where I'm gonna utilize my round two. Um, if I want the rocky edge to feel a little bit more jagged, then this is where I'm gonna take my two and kind of like purposely go in here and do like harder edges. You know, kind of just distinguish this shape a little bit more so it's not just soft curves. You know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. I was gonna say, I love that the shadows for this are like purple and blue. Yeah. Me too. That's cool. And if you gotta do a couple layers to get the value that you're trying to achieve, again, do what you gotta do. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. So now I'm gonna go towards my mountain and looking at the, my, my foreground mountain, the one that's closest to me, or monument or rock formation, whatever these things are. I realized that I did something, which is I kind of painted into my highlight right here on the left-hand side. You see how I did that? So even though I like outlined it, this part right here, I still painted into it with my purple. So it's not the end of the world. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paintbrush and just water and try and lighten that purple where that highlight would be hitting. Because it's really only on this right hand side a little bit. It seems like well, never mind. I changed my mind. You did the opposite of what I said you were going to do. What? I was going to say it seemed like you were pushing the paint away from that highlighted area, but then you pulled your brush directly into that highlight. <laughs> I'm just trying to pick up, so sometimes you got to go back and forth. Gotcha. Okay, so there we go. And again, I just want to take a moment to say that, like, as artists and as someone who paints I make mistakes like that all of the time <laughs> so I don't want you guys to feel like like if you're truly professional you know never to do those things that's not how it is it's more like how do you adapt when you do make those silly mistakes because everybody does so like that's what I do is I'm like oh shoot I accidentally painted over that area I should have left light I'll just lighten it and then if I got to move my highlight a little bit lower on that mountain thing instead of as high I'm fine with that too so a lot of it is not about being perfect. A lot of it is about learning to just like problem solve and adjust. Okay. Just kind of blending out some of this. Okay. Those are looking good. Yeah? Yeah. So my very last um, rock formation here, I want this to be dark. So I have a purple here. Wait a second. What? Is it purple and orange complementary colors? Purple and yellow. So is that why it looks so good? That's probably why it's both are popping. Oh. Because this is like yellow orange and this is like purple. Yeah. And so those are activating those colors, both of them simultaneously, because they're complementary colors. Complementary color trickery. Yeah. It's great. Okay, so to darken this purple, to make it almost black, I'm gonna introduce 
some orange in there. Let's see what that does. Okay, that's making it darker. I can also introduce a little bit of yellow. Now, if that's making it too green, which is probably what it's going to do, because our base is blue, if you add a little bit of fuchsia in there, that will counteract the greenness. Mm. And then I'm gonna do more blue. And now I have a really dark color. Dang. Okay. And here we go, we're gonna do our last mountain here. Again, kind of avoiding this spot where there would be a glare. Now, you can also, if you want to put the water down first, I notice that sometimes people put down color and then try and blend it and it just doesn't blend out as easy. That could be humidity, that could be timing. Um, sometimes I don't help with that because I chat, I chat about before I blend it. <laughs> um, so if, if you're experiencing that, what you can do is just lay the water down first and then drop in the dark value and let it do the work and let that do the work for you so water so again, you just want to make sure that as you're doing a new layer, that the value gets darker. So this farthest mountain here, the one in the background, should be the lightest, this should be mid, and this should be your dark value. And I, even in this like dark purple mixture that I have going on, I love it when you get pops of different color, even within those shadows. So sometimes when I'm feeling kind of like, when I like to live on the edge, <laughs> I'll drop some fuchsia just in there. Just in there, just see what it does. Let's just see where it goes, you know? That is bold. It just, it just makes it fun for me. I don't, I don't know, because it's like, why is there a bright spot on the shadow of the mountain? And it's like, why isn't there? Why isn't there? Why I isn't love there? that bright spot on the mountain. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it just makes it fun. It does. Wow. Gosh, look at that. It yeah, seems like see it how pops up more as it, it sits. It is. It is. Gosh dang, that's cool. Good night. <laughs> Everyone needs to have a Keenan hype man while you're painting. <laughs> Look at that mountain. Maybe we should just record some complimentary things for everyone to download and listen to. Oh my gosh. Look at that. We need to have like mark. a Keenan button right there. <laughs> Keenan button. That when you press it, you're just like, good night. Look at that. <laughs> Gold, dang, I love those colors. <laughs> oh no, you didn't use that Tahoe blue. You were feeling edgy and I like it. <laughs> Nobody take that idea. That's a great idea. <laughs> okay, focus, focus, focus. Okay, now I'm getting close to my glare spot and I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to this mixture to kind of lighten up my values as I'm getting closer to where I'm gonna put in like yellow and orange, okay? Okay? Okay. 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 We're gonna let that dry. We're gonna move back to our mountain here and put in our glow, our glowing part. The light that's hitting, I'm calling them mountains, I, I, they're not mountains, they're rock formations, I'm fairly sure. People climb them. <laughs> Do they? I don't know. I don't know. Do we ride bikes on them? I don't know what they do. Not very do they do, are they just there? It's a monument. Other monuments you can't climb on. You probably are. Listen, we're getting into dangerous territory here. I was here. almost going to ask how much research you did. Can and you? now I'm feeling like there don't. wasn't much research. Why you got to do that to me? <laughs> <laughs> calling me out in front of everybody? You're calling me out in front of my friends. You're embarrassing me. You're embarrassing me. 
<laughs> That's okay. They like they get me. They understand. Yeah, they get right, it. you guys get it. Yeah, they get it. Okay. So going into my farthest um, rock here. Now I'm looking at my reference photo and I'm looking at the space that I left to leave this glow. And I left a lot larger of space in what I'm painting now than what I did on my reference photo. Um, that's not the end of the world. If you guys are noticing that and you wanna go in and change it, you can. I'm just gonna keep going with it. Um, but if you left a really thick line instead of like a thin, just a space for a highlight, you can go in there and add more purple. I'm just gonna go for it though, cause why not? I'm gonna do tangerine, kind of where it's meeting this mountain. Now you gotta be careful though, because because these colors are complementary, when you mix them together, they're gonna turn to mud. So right where that purple overlaps with the orange, it's gonna turn kind of brownish or grayish. Know that that's okay, but don't do it like so much that you get rid of the orange and the yellow. And then I'm gonna drop in some yellow. And I feel like this color needs to be warmer. So I'm gonna grab more tangerine or maybe some red that I have on my palette and drop that in there too. Sarah, yep. can we do a sci-fi painting? Of like a world that doesn't exist? Sure, or like a portal. Oh. Because the circle where the highlights are right now, the middle of this right now, make me think of some type of portals about to form right there. Yeah, I could see that. I don't know why. That'd be cool. I went real sci-fi there real quick, and I apologize. No, I like sci-fi. Cool, perfect. Then I don't. I stand by what I said. Perfect. Okay, so there's my glowy part. Now, if you drop in strong color, it might like bleed out across. I also kind of let that go a little bit too, because why not? Okay, now we're onto our second mountain. So I'm gonna start with kind of this orangey red, and then leaving the very center of it yellow. Kind of like, think of like a, you know, like a never ending God's gobstopper. Like the giant no, job not break. not job. It could be job breakers. You know how there's layers of colors. Yes. So that's kind of what I'm doing oh, here. It's like okay. purple, orange. It's Got like it. purple, red, orange, yellow. Yeah. Gobstopper. And then I kind of want to like blend where this purple is hitting the shadow a little bit more. Because I don't want this to feel chunky. I don't want this to feel um, like blocky. I want it to be a little bit of a smoother transition. So if you've got to go in and add a couple of layers to make this feel a little bit smoother, do what you got to do. Is that personal preference? What do you mean? What if you like blocky? If you like blocky, then leave it. That is absolutely a stylistic choice. I like my transitions to be smoother, mm -hmm. um, but you don't have to. And actually, it's um, like impressionism in painting, which is my favorite style, is actually doing little chunks oh, like that. Cool. So then when you stand back and look at it far away, um, it looks like something. But when you're close, all you see is just like Dang, that's cool. areas of color. And this is reading really yellow. So I'm just going to go and warm it up mm. and add a little bit more orange to my edge there and let's do a little bit more red so just kind of like adjust it as you go to the glow of your liking was van gogh impression uh-huh in, in? Impression? Impression. Im. I am. I am. Like an impression, impressionism. Got it. Okay. And then last area. And you can do it opposite too, where like the other two I started with my orange and my red. Like you can start with your yellow instead and then add 
your orange. And red. Okay, and I need to actually make this part darker because I didn't paint this side of the formation. And then like this is where I, okay, I put in my highlights, I put in my shadows, and now this is where I kind of step back and I'm like, okay, what can I do? Like this yellow is just reading too bright. It's not reading to me like the sun is hitting that. Um, so what I can do then is I'm gonna to tone down the yellow by adding a little bit of orange. And maybe even more so, I just feel like that yellow is so bright. Again, this is more personal style, personal preference. So if you like that hint of yellow in yours and you wanna keep it, keep it. For me, it's just, I don't know, I, I think I want a warmer hint to it, like an orange or a red than a bright yellow. So that's what I'm gonna go for here. Right now it kinda of looks like there could be like a river going between and through the... Ooh, that would be cool. Now I'm just gonna kind of clean up some of these edges here where they meet. And again, if you, if you need to like lift color out a little bit, cause you wanna like lie in an area and then do another layer of a different color, you absolutely can. I actually wanna do that a little bit on this middle one. And I wanna, put a little bit of fuchsia in there because I really enjoyed how that looked on this rock. Mm -hmm. Formation, monument. Monument, monument. Monument, monument. I'm gonna put that in there. Okay, and don't forget to like hold it up if you need to hold it up. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna go back in on my last one and just kind of smooth it out. Again, I just want to make sure it stays a lighter value than this one. So I'm just taking a damp brush and working the area back and forth. Okay. Now, also what you can do to really like separate these areas is where these edges meet. If you need to kind of lighten them, like between the second and third, if you need to lift color out to make it very clear, this is the edge of one range, like this is where one ends and where one begins, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Then if you lift a little bit of color out, that makes this edge clearer. Yes. Yes. So you can do that as a trick where maybe like you like how dark it is silhouetted against that yellow sky so you don't want to lighten it but you want to push, you want to separate these two spaces then you can have it go from dark to light, dark to light down mm -hmm. here and separate it and that will make this one pop out more then without you having to mess with that um, silhouette against the sky. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I love a good silhouette against the sky though. And then look at this, okay? The, and this is, this is the part that I love. Looking in closely on these mountains, ranges, rock formations, Monument, structures monuments. of natural qualities. <laughs> I have, yellow, I have orange, I have green, I have blue, I have purple, I have fuchsia. In here I'm getting some gorgeous turquoise colors. Like those were all accidental. I didn't go in and mix this turquoise and say I'm gonna put that. Do you see that turquoise color in there? I would not have seen that. 
unless you point until you pointed it out. I would not have seen it. And it's beautiful. It is, it is so beautiful. So I just want to say like these colors can be tricky because they're complementary and when you kind of mix them, sometimes they get muddy, but then when you lift them or like mess with them a little bit, you just get colors that you weren't planning and it's beautiful. Mm. It's just beautiful. Okay. That's it. That's our project. What? Nailed we did it. it. Holy cow. Um, I'm going to remove the tape. Oh, yes. This I, is the best part. It well. is so it's satisfying, but a couple uh, a couple just tricks or uh, hints, which is I used a lot of paint down here, like a lot. So it's possible that it bled underneath because it was such a dark value, like even so strong. Even if you used your even if you tactic. see, even if you press really hard, it still could bleed through. I think that this is because they're liquid watercolors. Um, I have to try them with the tube ones to see if I get that same effect. But I noticed that it happens with the liquid, so I'm wondering if that's the difference. Mm. But I'm not sure on that. Um, if you have a heat gun, you can use the heat gun to help lift the tape so it doesn't tear your paper. Oh yeah. Um, also, make sure your painting is totally dry. This area is still a little bit wet, but I'm still going to lift anyway. Um, so just a couple things, okay? I'm going to risk it. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do it. Now, when you lift, you want to pull away from your painting. So I have my Wasi tape here, and I'm just going to start from the edge that's touching my painting and pull away. Okay, that's doing pretty good. Oh, yeah. So slow and steady, pull the angle away. Okay, next piece I believe is this one. So I'm starting from the inside and pulling away. I got a little bit of bleeding, that's okay. Slow, steady. Ba-bam. Next one. Now this area is still a little bit wet. The tricky thing about wet areas is if you remove the place that's keeping that wetness in place and that wetness could bleed through. We like to call that a berm. A berm? A berm. Is that a real term? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah, but I'm pretty sure now I'm not feeling very confident. <laughs> Do I call it a berm? No, I no I. I'm in just what call I'm it just trying to think, like in what uh, Let me, is it a woodworking term? I think it's is it a, a farming? Okay, <laughs> I'm like what? What community <laughs> uses this term? So I know that I'm using it right. A berm. Uh huh. A flat strip of land, raised bank or terrace bordering a river or canal. So that berm is stopping the river oh, water color oh, 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 from oh, flowing. Oh, 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 oh. Got that. <laughs> All right, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Perfect. Okay, slowly pulling away. Yeah, there's a little bit of bleeding there. Not too bad, though. I mean, that area is still pretty wet, too. Yes. Look at that. Voila. Last one. What is it about tape being peeled off a piece of paper that's so satisfying? It is. It's awfully satisfying. <sighs> there oh, it is. Man. Lovely. I hope you guys have fun with this project and the colors and just like playing with it, the transitions, just all of the fun stuff. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. I'm sure that there'll be some really fun versions and um, some learned lessons. Um, please share them. Please, I mean, like that's the whole point of like doing this with other people is so we can learn from each other. And it's not about who's better. And it's not about making sure it's perfect. Um, it's about the community of learning. And when we help each other learn, instead of keeping everything to ourselves and our secrets and all that stuff, we all get better. Like we all raise up. So share this on Instagram. You can tag us at let's go make art or hashtag let's make art. 
If um, you want to be part of our Facebook group, it's a separate group from our business page that's for the sole purpose of you guys being able to share what it is that you're making so you guys can learn and connect from each other. That is called Let's Make Art Watercolor. So post your stuff there. Um, if you have questions, ask questions. If you really like what you're seeing on there and you wanna ask how they did it, ask them. Like, let's share the information, let's share what we know, and just help each other, because gosh, that's the fun of it, you know? And, and we just all get better, so. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. And if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.